Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Face Palm Sunday. Once upon a time, that used to be me. Yeah, shocking, isn't it? That was me. Look at me now. I've grown. I've become more handsome. That was me. Look at me. That was me. I found a company that knows how to treat its customers right. That company is known as Dollar Shave Club. For only a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club delivers the best quality stainless steel blades right to your door for only a fraction of the price. High quality, high quality, normal cheapy crap that you buy at the store which is always overpriced. Don't be that fool. Stop getting ripped off buying these crappy things and try out their new shave butter which moisturizes your skin and makes your skin feeling like an angel. And if you really want your girlfriend all over you, don't forget to try out their One Wipe Charlie's premium butt wipes for men. With one simple stroke, you'll eliminate that dingleberry farm that's been piling up for years, and you'll be leaving a scent that smells like peppermint. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's right, honey. She approves. Shave time, shave money. Try dollarshaveclub.com slash Mr. Repsion. You know, with a video title like that, mini movies for the creative church, that this video is going to be powerful, emotional, and it's going to bring you to your knees and cry for repentance for Jesus Christ. You ready, guys, for this mini movie for the creative church? Let's do this. Sex. Throughout the Bible, it's proclaimed as a good thing a profound expression of love that forges a unique and powerful bond between a man and a woman. I agree with part of your first statement made here that sex is a powerful bond between two people. A guy and a guy, a girl and a girl, a guy on a girl, whatever it be. Sex can be a very emotional, physical, intimate experience. But I want to kind of debunk something that a lot of Christian religious folks like to spread, and you said it here, is that sex is this unique flower special thing. Well, yes, maybe your first time having sex is special, but sex in general is not unique whatsoever. And see, folks like this like to hide their religious rules, restrictions, regulations behind words like this. Because when you hear the word unique, it makes you feel special. So when they describe sex is unique because God intended to because God intended sex to be unique, it's a way to facade religious control. That you shouldn't have premarital sex or you have, shouldn't have sex before marriage type of thing. See, it took me a while, I, I watched this video a couple times for me to, because they worded it so, so creatively. Sex is a unique thing. No, it's not. It's a natural, biological thing that animals have been doing for millions of years and that humans have been doing for thousands upon thousands of years. There's no uniqueness to it like religion tries to hide behind by presenting it as this special thing that God gave to you or something like that. But along the way, something went seriously wrong. When humanity left their perfect and life-giving relationship with God, sin entered the scene and infected everything. Now, I've mentioned this in my past videos, uh, but I want to mention it again because I'm always gaining new subscribers and a new audience. Sin is a man-made concept. Sin does not exist. It is not real. It is a thing created by religion to make you think that you're doing something wrong when in reality, how you feel, how you think, for the most part, is probably completely natural and human to think like the way that you do. Like, I can be sometimes very prideful. Do I think that me being prideful is an act of sin and I'm in violation of God? No. Do I care? No. But you see, that's what sin is. Sin is an act, anything that is in violation of God's word, the Bible. That is what sin is. And I know for a fact that a lot of people who watch me don't adhere to the Bible. So therefore, you probably already have come to the conclusion, so I'm kind of beating a dead horse, that sin is a man-made concept. Sin doesn't exist. Sin caused people to become disconnected from God, from each other, and from themselves. Sex, the ultimate connection between men and women, couldn't hide for long. Sin grabbed hold of sex and transformed it into something completely unrecognizable. 
I'm not sure I understand when you say that sin transformed sex into something completely unrecognizable. What does that even mean? I don't know. And the reason I say that is because sex is sex. You do things. A PP goes into a JJ, or a PP goes into an anus, or two PPs rub together. There's nothing that's not recognizable by that. Like, sex has always been sex. Always. Throughout history. This new form of sex had nothing to do with respect or commitment, and everything to do with lust and control. First off, you are in no position to say that all sex that happens now, this is a huge generalization from you religious folks, is that sex is done out of lust and control. First of all, if a, if sex is done for simply controlling reasons, that's not a healthy relationship that you're in. I don't care what gender you are. That's not healthy. Uh, but you essentially say here that sex isn't about respect and commitment. It's all about lust and control. How do you get to discern what is lust and control in a relationship? And how do you make the claim that people can't be committed or be respectful to one another when they have sex. How, how can you make such a stupid generalization? I don't understand that. It was no longer about two people becoming one. Sex became about the desires of the individual, a way for people to get what they want from one another. To put it plainly, sex became a transaction. So unless you're referring to prostitution, I don't know what you mean by sex is a transaction. That makes no logical sense to me. And the reason I say this, is because earlier you just said in this clip, is that sex is all about your own desires. Again, if you're in a relationship and the first thing that you care about is sex and everything that you want, you want this, 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 and all you want from this relationship is pleasure, 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 that's really not a loving, respectful, committed relationship. That's an unhealthy relationship. If you're in a relationship with someone and it's all one-sided in regards to sex or anything really, that's not healthy. You're in a bad relationship. That's an abusive relationship. When, when, I, when I view a two monogamous with people, I think of two people who want to please one another and get pleasure from that, but equally give and take from one another. You give and you take, you give and you take, you give back to one another, you give. That's how it works. That's what a normal relationship would be. So you hear defining sex and relationships as this transaction that is purely done out of your own selfish motives is retarded. It's stupid. It's a, it, are, do people exist who simply have sex for their own selfish needs? Of course there are people like that. But again, this is another mass generalization on people who have sex. You're claiming that my time that I lost my virginity was done purely for pleasurable reasons, that I, I didn't want to actually care for this person. I did it because I was a selfish son of a bitch, and that wasn't true at all when I lost my virginity. And so, sex strayed further and further away from God's original plan. So here's my question. What was God's original plan with sex? Because realistically speaking, if you believe in the Bible and you believe in God, God created sex, he created humanity, he created an Adam and Steve. So, therefore, what was, what was God expecting with sex? That people weren't going to have sex to, for pleasure? That people weren't going to have sex to feel an emotional bond and love one another? That people weren't going to have sex? Oh, that's right. You created sex. Your original plan for sex was only to procreate only to procreate to have our offspring automatically be doomed to hell if they don't become saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel and the resurrection among the inherency of, of the Bible and among a bunch of other doctrines. That makes a, that, that's great, great reasoning. Your original plan for sex was for people to procreate so you could doom them from birth. Fast forward to today, and sex is everywhere. People are obsessed with it. Sex, which used to be a good thing, became an ultimate thing. Something that validates one's very existence and a reason for living. My reason for living has nothing to do with sex. And I think a lot of people watching this video can say that their reason for living is not 
because of sex. If the reason that you're alive is because of sex, then your priorities are really screwed up. Secondly, I don't know anyone, anyone who has, who's, who, who lives their existence to feel validated through sex. Like, if you have sex because you want to feel validated by someone, your priorities and your line of thinking is really skewed, and that's really damaging and toxic because you shouldn't be seeking validation from anyone through sex, through peers and friends, through drugs, through smoking, through drinking. Like, if that's why you're seeking validation through sex or any of those other substances or things, then you you got some really big things that you got to battle out and specifically in regards to you know your self image and self esteem because it's pretty damn low if your whole existence is to have sex for validation again i don't really i've never met anyone who's had sex for validation but i think he's just this religious guy is just pulling our fucking leg here trying to present sex as this horrible thing when in fact it's really not. And with its new and elevated status came many promises. Promises it couldn't deliver, leaving an entire society feeling empty and disillusioned. But like any addiction, the answer is always more. More relationships, more romance, and of course, more sex. And it's in this endless search that we find ourselves. Sex is clearly broken, but it isn't the real problem. It's simply the crack on the surface. The real problem of sin goes much deeper, and its consequences are far more devastating. Mom, what did he just say? What does he mean by that? Does he really mean that if I stick my twinkle dink in her JJ before we get married, that that it's sin, and that I'll and, and the eternal and, and the consequence is eternal damnation, just for sticking my twinkle dink inside her JJ? Look at the birds out there, Mom. They're doing it. Why can't I do it? Here's the good news, though. There's still hope. God can redeem you and your sexuality. Sex can be a good thing again. God does not need to redeem your sexuality. I don't care what your sexuality is. You deserve to be loved and respected and treated just like anyone else. Despite what your sexuality is. Despite the redeeming that this man tells you that you need to do because your sexuality is corrupted by sin. No. Be confident with who you are and your sexuality. Don't listen to this garbage that I've been responding to about you need to redeem who you are because of sin. Always remember that sin is a man-made concept, a concept in violation of anything that God does not like and that is used to control and make people feel guilty. And then he says, sex can be a good thing again. No, sex is a good thing. It's a natural, biological thing that we humans and animals naturally were created to do. Procreate, have sex for pleasure, whatever it be. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't let sin scare you off. Just walk it off, as cheesy as that sounds.